Well, hello radio people. It's Bob in one KPR. And uh, today we want to do a quick tutorial on uh, pre-selectors for uh, radio. Uh, any band from uh, VLF and LF all the way up at uh, 6 meters or so. Whatever you want to do through the HF bands. Uh, anybody that knows me knows I've been fooling around with pre-selectors for about 50 years now. When I was a kid, I took apart a tuner, a ham radio tuner, and rewired it to make it a pre-selector. Nothing more, really, than a bandpass filter. But uh, I've been experimenting with those over the years, particularly using uh, homemade coils and uh, uh, variable caps, usually uh, for receiving broadcast uh, caps that are uh, 17 PFs up to 365 puffs <clears throat> excuse me and uh i decided uh, last year i'm going to go into using uh playing around with veractors so here we go uh we're going to skip over all the other stuff that you can see on my website www.bobsamerica.com there's a lot of the old uh, pre-selector mechanical pre-selectors this is fully electronic um here I've got some uh, BB, uh, BB-112 Veractors, and what we're doing is I'm putting them in back-to-back, uh, -back, cathode to cathode, using, uh, well, we started out with 12 volts, which is about as far as you want to go with them, and a little divider network, 1 meg or 100K here, and then isolating them from the 50 ohm input 50 ohm output isolating them with a one meg uh, resistor down to the anodes and to complete the circuit the same thing on each uh, for each anode here so the cathode feed and the uh, anode feeds are, are balanced bringing this uh, to the center of uh, VCC um, the uh, the first one I made was for all band. I'm going to talk today mostly about the broadcast band one I did. Uh, the 112, the BB112, is good for, at zero volts, about 375. When you use an apparent series, you lose about half of the capacity. So uh, uh, from instead of being 700, it's 375. Uh, going all the way up to 10 volts... Uh, which would be about three puffs. Well, that's way too much that I need for here. So what I've done is I built a, uh, a regulated supply that takes my my basic 12-volt uh, feed, and we're cranking out about seven volts. And if you look at the chart, seven volts is about seven puffs. And we'll go over to this chart. Here. By the way, if you wanted any of these documents, you're going to have to replay it, uh, freeze, and do a screen grab, uh, and that way you could you could study this better. So I'm starting here below the broadcast band at uh, half a meg, and we're going out here to almost two megs. And you can see I've plotted the actual uh, volts. Uh, where this circuit will will resonate at which frequency I'm using now for the broadcast band uh, 330 micro Henry's uh, with the with the BB 112 and those uh, capacitance values I showed you in the first chart so you see it's uh, let me stand up here it's fairly linear not bad and Wish I had a, an assistant to help me with this. Uh, here we're going to come over to some of the actual voltage and frequencies that I measured using this combination. Up to uh, I stopped at 1700, but we're we're well out into the uh, 160 meter hand band. And over here, 530. I'm actually down into like 490. Uh, if we go below uh, 0.5 volts. Uh, here's the uh, here's the circuit again. You might want to freeze this and do a screen grab at some point. Uh, the one meg isolation resistors, the divider, 
the balancing resistor. I'm using 0.47 mics, so uh, we can get into the lower frequencies without any attenuation. And the uh, and the 330 cap. It's a series bandpass filter. That's all it is. I got away from the parallel bandpass because you can't get a Q that's very high. Uh, for them. And we'll get into the Q in a minute. Now, very quickly, if you want to do all band, and we can go, these black lines represent coils. The nice thing about reactants is uh, they're logarithmic. So if you want to go out to 70 megs over here, 70 megs way up above 6 meters, that's one microhenry. And they work in decades. 10 microhenries, 100 microhenries. 1 millihenry, 10 millihenries, 100 millihenries. 100 millihenries will get you down in, almost into, actually into VLF if you wanted to, but certainly down to 30, uh, 30 kilohertz if you do beacons and uh, you know, any of the loafer type stuff. But again, uh, if you notice, I penciled in the broadcast band here within the range of the uh, the Veractor, which is uh, up here. I stopped at 10 puffs and went down here to uh, about 300 puffs. So that's this pencil line. Notice the kind of rejection, the return loss that you're getting in the broadcast band here. If you go over to the actual impedance, you know, a thousand and two thousand ohms. We're up at forty dB of return loss uh, in this band. A forty dB on your S meter, considering each S unit is six dB. That's uh, <laughs> that's a lot of rejection. Notice as you go up in frequency, it becomes less. But we're still talking about twelve and twenty, fifteen dB uh, return loss here. Fifteen dB rejection. Of the station that's next to you that you want to get rid of or you know notch out notch out of your uh, uh, receiver's input up here my lord we're at a hundred thousand ohms uh the twenty thousand ohms the low end of the low band uh we're talking about you know up around 60 db or better so that's that that's the theory. Uh, if you can't get, let me go through these charts again. Maybe, maybe you can grab these and uh, print them if you want. There's that. Uh, here's my notes. I hope that's reproducible on the screen. This is the. Uh, Resonating, step-by-step uh, -step, uh, resonating points of the uh, uh, the various frequencies that you're tuned to versus the voltage using, of course, the 330 microhenry. And again, this is important. There's the circuit. Now we'll zoom down on the... Uh, well, if we can... There's a circuit if you can't read it. One meg, one meg, one meg. One meg or 100k, depends. I'm using 7 volts, so you can go to 12. Go to ground here. All right, let's go over to the unit. Uh, we're coming in here from my... Uh, I think I'm on the 80 meter wire now. And out to the uh, receiver here. Here's the actual unit. I've got it in a steel can. Uh, you can see the, uh, let me get my tool. There's the Veractors, uh, 0.5 or 0.47 coupling caps. There's the, uh, 330 microhenry thing. I'm using blue and yellow. That's the old retina. It shows you I'm old school. The old days, yellow was, uh, input, blue was output. Just like red and black or plus and minus and so on and so on. Uh, here's the little regulator. It's a little 7-volt thing. I'm coming in here now with 12. 
I've got a diode biased, and so that uh, this is actually a, uh, I think it's a 5 volt regulator. But I've got a diode bias so that I can get up to 7 volts with it. The control, nothing more than a 100k pot. Okay, I'm going to pause here, put it back together, and we'll show you this thing in operation. All right, we're back. There it is, all closed up. Uh, I put a little LED in there so that I could look inside the chassis if there's ever an issue with something. I know at least this thing is getting power. Uh, so, we go over here to the receiver. I'm around half a meg, 600 kilohertz local uh, AMer. I've got the AGC shut off. And um, I have this set. Let's see if we can get in here and we can see it. They're plus 35 dB on the signal strength meter. I'm using that as a reference here with the AGC. So we're going to start at 35. That is peaked. I'm now going to adjust the pot here. So here we go. I'm turning it down. And you can see we've gone uh, we're up around uh, now we enter 10 dB. I ran out of control because I'm so near the bottom of the band here. 600, 500 or so is the bottom. So there wouldn't be any stations to bother me down there anyhow. All right, I'm going to turn it up in frequency. I'm going to rise in frequency. We're going to peak at the, uh, the 35 dB point. And I'm continuing to turn. The control up toward 1.8 megs, and as you can see, I have literally shut the system down. There's nothing coming through. That looks to be like uh, 35, 25, 15. We're talking about 20 dB, 25 dB. It's actually more than that. I don't know what the actual input impedance of this thing is, but at 50 ohms, we're at 48 dB of rejection now from this thing. All right, let's go back up and turn this down toward the 600 kilohertz. Well, we went past it, but there you go. Uh, now, we'll do another one quickly. We'll go to the middle of the band, I'll shut off the AGC. Now we're up near one meg, and here we go again. I'm going up in frequency. Well, I pinned it. I actually went way over. Down to zero. And here we come back. I'm going down in frequency. Let's... So, you know, that's just the, uh, the quick and dirty way of testing. But it does cover from about, uh, oh, I don't know, 480 or 490 kilohertz out to about 1.9 megs. So there's the broadcast band. Again, if you want to do this for uh, the entire band, for if you're a ham or an SWL, get some nice high Q inductors, 100 or 200 Q. You can buy them from uh, anybody online, their uh, Mauser or Allied or one of those people. One, 10, and 100 micro Henry's. 1, 10, 100 millihenries. Get a reactance chart, or do it on the calculator the old way. Plot it down to the frequencies you want to cover. Read across to the actual impedance of that series tuned circuit. You'll see it's a, it's a band pass thing. When you're resonant, it's zero ohms. And you're going to go right through the system. When, when you're off frequency, uh, the R starts to climb, as you can see here on the chart. Well, you can study this and see that for yourself. Then again, very simple schematic. No more mechanical uh, uh, variable capacitors. Now we're using uh, for actors. And I got to tell you, it really works. Let me just grab the uh, quickly the uh, the broadband one. All right, very quickly, 
Here's a rotary switch. I'm running two. I'm gonna get some light. There's the uh, the bank of uh, inductors We're coming off here. Here's the pot for voltage control. I'm using a dual pot because I didn't have the right value, but uh, 100k to one meg, that's fine. And a switch. So it's that simple compared to the uh, just the broadcast band we did here. All right, that's it, Bob, N1KPR. Sorry to go over this so fast, but uh, a lot of technology over the years. Having a decent pre-selector in your monitoring system is uh, like having the world. When you, <laughs> when you need it, you need it. When you don't need it, leave it off. But boy, oh boy, I'll tell you, uh, I pulled out some very weak ones, particularly digital, you know, digital signal work, weak signal, satellite, EME. Uh, these are very uh, valuable. Okay, we went real long on this one. Thanks, everybody, for looking. It's uh, bobsamerica.com is the website. And, uh, of course, my YouTube channel here, N1KPR. Thanks for looking. Bye-bye.